EA is kind of the, uh, the foundation of if you want to learn how to fly uh, in general aviation, uh, that's part of our goal is to create that spark. Making sure everybody has a chance to go out and fly in an airplane or uh, become, you know, uh, an enthusiast of aviation. There's a lot of barriers uh, in aviation and, and, and I love the fact that EAA sort of tries to take some of that away. We try to uh, make it easy for people to get a chance to go up in an airplane. EAA is an organization, a nonprofit organization, that uh, was created back in 1953 by Paul and Audrey Poboresny. Uh, down in Hales Corners, uh, Wisconsin. And EA is about creating flight, uh, about generating pilots, but it all came about by the home-built feeling that Paul had and the desire of, of home-built and building airplanes. About 98% of our airplanes that we have are still flyable. Uh, out of those, probably you know, only 30%, 20% are, are able to fly. If you would pull them out of the hangar, put some oil and gas in that they could fly today. There's still a lot of uh, restoration and, uh, and work that has to be done to get these things in the air. But currently about 98% are, are flyable. We are, have a, quite a collectic uh, collection here at EAA. We've got a collection of the very early vintage, the replica of the Wright Flyer, the Curtis Jenny. We move into the, uh, into the 20s, the 1920s of, of different aircraft, to the acrobatic, to the uh, innovative side of the, uh, of the Burt Rattan collection, to then our Warburg collections. The Eagle Hangar is a representation of, of mostly the World War II aircraft that we have. Well, the P-51 was very uh, notorious for the World War II. It actually was a defining moment in the, uh, in the, Atlanta, the uh, European war against Germany. So when the P-51 was then built, then became escorting the, the, the B-17s over Germany, and it was really a kind of a turning point in the war. And it just, it's got a great engine sound, it's got a Merlin sound of it, and it's very fast. It's just a real pretty airplane, one of my favorites. The P-51 was Paul's, one of his airplanes that he loved to fly in the air shows. This one is a pretty special airplane. It's one of my favorites for sure. Uh, it's a Lockheed P-38 Lightning. Uh, it wears the markings of Marge. Uh, that was an airplane flown by Richard Bong from up north in uh, Poplar, Wisconsin. He was America's highest scoring ace during World War II. He ended the war with 40 victories. Marge was his fiance. He had uh, her photo uh, blown up and uh, glued to the nose of the airplane. That's her high school graduation picture. That was the most recent photo she had of herself to send to Richard Bong overseas. And I think that speaks to a few different things. One, that's the age of our World War II veterans at that time. You know, enlisted men, gunners were upwards of 17, 18 years old. Pilots that were flying combat missions were 20, 21. The other part of it it speaks to is technology. We all didn't walk around all day with a camera, you know, in our pockets at that time. Uh, getting your photo taken was sort of a big deal, it was a treat. Uh, so that, you know, she didn't, could, she couldn't just send a selfie and, uh, you know, glue it to the nose. That was the most recent formal portrait, you know, she had taken of herself. Yeah, the art behind me in this collection is, is uh, the world-renowned painter of both World War I and World War II, James Dietz. And uh, this is on loan from the Wings of the Rockies out of Denver, Colorado. And as you can see behind me and you get a chance to look around, it's, it's, it's exquisite. We have this art here until the end of July. Another great exhibit that we have on loan right now through the CAF, the Commemorative Air Force in Dallas, is the nose art. It's the 34 original nose art off of B-24 and B-17 bombers. All but one are, are female images and they're all painted, but they are originally cut off of the noses of these airplanes before they were melted down after the war. Today we have them uh, at least for the end of the year, 2016 and maybe hopefully in 2017. It's a great exhibit. A lot of people are coming to the museum just to see the nose art. You know, the future of aviation is gonna come from here. Uh, this is where your future uh, engineers, astronauts, test pilots, they're coming from EAA. Uh, they're, the, they're the folks, the kids that are coming here for summer camps that uh, are getting excited and attending uh, different uh, chapter meetings at their local airports. Kid Venture, at least in the building here, we've got a really interactive area uh, for kids of all ages, even adults, to come in and get a hands-on experience of different activities from robotics to learning how to fly in a flight simulator. They've got a pedal machine to learn how to air dynamics and wind dynamics. There's a hang glider, uh, a hot air balloon type of simulator. But right now there's a current an F-22 replica, uh, third scale up there, learning about the F-22 and what it is today. And then during the summer, during our air venture, we have a kid venture program outside in our Pioneer Airport that has a, you know, multiple hands-on activities of kids learning how to carve a prop, learning how to pound and put a rivet into a piece of metal, uh, learning how to build a balsa glider, and just a lot of really neat activities that families and, and kids get to enjoy during the Air Venture Week. I really think that the, the, the young kids you see walking around checking out the drone cage, uh, going for their young eagle flights, uh, I think those are your future 
astronauts and those are your future engineers. So I really do believe the future is coming out of here. Our goal is to try to create that spark and be that spirit behind the world of aviation. So I think EA plays a major role in that. And again, in the general aviation sense, it doesn't really uh, participate much in the commercial side, but it's really the general aviation that I and you and other people that want to learn how to fly, want to learn how to build, want to learn how to support or become a member and those types of things. So EA is kind of that foundation or resource. So it's our job is to get the word out that we are a state-of-the-art, world-class museum. These are the world headquarters for EAA, uh, and so we just want people uh, to, to come to Oshkosh. This Air Museum, uh, I think, is something special. I think this Air Museum embodies what we call recreational aviation. This museum is all about people who want to have fun, and I, I think our museum gives a lot of youth a chance to get some hands-on experience with some of this stuff. It's just a great place, and uh, I just wish people, more people would come, and that we have here over 200 airplanes in our collection. And that doesn't even talk about the behind the scenes and, and all the artifacts that we have going back to 1953. So, you know, our EAA museum is going to be here forever, that I'd, I'd like to hope it is, um, and for many to enjoy in the future.